All right, here we are, Hostos Community College, easily. It's one of my favorite places, my favorite speech of the whole year. We're gonna jam out with the Leadership Academy. I'm just really excited to be here. I'm very grateful to be here, and I'm gonna bring it today because they deserve it. Here, South Bronx, 149th Grand Concourse, Hostos Community College, wherever you're watching, thanks for watching. Let's do it. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it, man. Hey, everybody. How are we doing today? Awesome. I love that. You know, there's so, we spend so much of our life in our job <clears throat> that it's really silly. I, I, it breaks my heart to watch so many people spend 50, 60, and sometimes even 70, 80 hours a week doing something that they, that they hate. You know, how many people in here know someone that does a job that they hate? Yeah, like every, like all of us, right? So my whole thing is that I really want to help people figure out how can we do what we love for the rest of our lives and still make a lot of money doing it, right? And so what was interesting to me about all the, the answers of the questions that I just heard from you guys is most of you actually want to do something that gives back, right? Which is great. But what I found is a lot of people don't know how to do that and they don't know how to make money on their passion. And in some cases, they don't even know how to identify their passion, right? So a big part of what we're gonna do today is that. So just a quick thing about me, I graduated from CUNY. I went to, actually went to law school at CUNY. I went to law school at Queens College. I graduated, I worked for Mike Bloomberg and his administration when he was mayor of New York City for three years. Then I moved to San Francisco when I started my own company. And we tell stories that sell. That's the, our tagline. The company's called Brian Rashid Global. We work with a lot of the biggest brands in the world, as well as solo entrepreneurs and small businesses. I speak around the world about marketing uh, and branding and entrepreneurship. I write for Forbes Magazine, for Entrepreneur Magazine, for Huffington Post. So everything that I'm about to share with you guys today comes from me actually living in this world of entrepreneurship, right? So how many of you guys want to ultimately do something that you love and make a lot of money doing it. Raise your hand. Cool, everybody, that's, that's a good start. How many of you have an idea of something that you'd like to start right now in your head? About half of you. How many people, and it's cool if you don't, how many people right now have no idea what they wanna do? No idea. <clears throat> the other half of you are, are lying. Half is like, yeah, I know what I wanna do. And I'm like, who doesn't know what they wanna do? And only one person raises his hand. How many people have no idea what they want to do? Okay. So the rest of you, okay, it's fine. The, the goal today, right, the, the, the title of the workshop was the future of personal branding and how to make money doing what you love. So by the time we're finished today at 5.30, in an hour and a half, my hope is that we've identified something that you can get started on today that could potentially lead to you making money on this thing in the future. Cool? So. Let's start with number, the question number one. The question number one is, you have to think about, what is something that I am very passionate about? So what I want you to do is I want you to write down one, two, three, four, or even five things that you are passionate about. And if it's just one thing, that's okay. And if it's up to five things, that's okay. Don't think too much right now. Just write down what you're passionate about. Good? All right, so the, next, so the next exercise, the next step is what I'm good at. So my skills are, what do you guys think that you're good at? Maybe someone's told you you're good at it. Maybe you figured out you're good at yourself. What are some things that if someone said, what, what do you do well? I'm a good writer, I'm organized, I have a lot of empathy. Um, I love animals, I'm, I connect well with animals, um, I'm good at fundraising money for charity. Like what is the thing that you're good at? And again, you could write down, you good? You can write down as many as you, as you have or if you have one, that's okay too. But every single person in this room, I can guarantee you has at least one, bas uh, one passion and at least one skill. All right, so now we're gonna do a little exercise, okay? 
first thing I want to hear is I actually want to hear from all of you what are some of your passions. So just who wants to go first? Just let's just jam, my man. Now, so so there's a couple reasons that I started doing it this way. Number one, because what would be ideal in an ideal world, the skill sets that you have are also aligned with the passions that you have, right? But the biggest reason that I wrote this down is because if you think about this, all of the skills that you guys wrote down from what I heard so far will be helpful to any passion that you have. And there's something even more important. The skills that you wrote down, the fact that you guys can write down skills that fast shows me that you're in the right mentality to actually start working on your passion, right? Because if you think that you aren't skilled at anything, then it's gonna be really hard for you to believe that you can actually start something and make money doing it, right? So the first thing I wanna to say to you is, if you have a single skill and every single one of you wrote down something, then, what's, then what we're gonna do up here is completely possible for all of you. But, like I was talking to somebody before this thing, he said to me, dude, I'm surrounded by negativity. My, my aunt, my mom, my cousin, we all live together and it's just constant negativity. The school that I go to, constant negativity. And I said to him, it's your decision to not listen to any of it, right? And, and let me tell you guys something, it's about when you start to create something that you love and you wanna make money doing it, it's hard as shit. It's already hard. Even I have amazing people around me and it's already hard. So when you start to put bad people in your ear whispering in your ear, you're not shit, you're not gonna do this, you're not gonna do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, and you start to believe it for one second, you're in trouble. So the reason that I wanted to write down skills is that every single night, you guys should be thinking about, I'm good at this. I'm good at this and this and this and this, and no matter what anybody else tells me, I know. Because you're in your own head. And that's the number one most important thing that I've learned over the last six years as an entrepreneur is the second that I don't listen to anybody else or maybe I'll listen but they don't affect my mood is the second that you can really win. So now, the passion part is the most exciting part, right? So, a couple different things that I want to, to say to you. I want this talk to be really practical. At the same time, I want this talk to really blow your mind. So I wanna play in two different directions. The first is, I want you to literally walk out of here in an hour and say, I know what I should start to do to move the ball forward on making money doing what I love. And at the same time, I want you to think there is no such thing as thinking too big. There's no such thing as an idea that I can't make happen. If your idea is to start 100,000 animal shelters around the world, and someone says to you like, you can't do that, you're from, like, you're from the South Bronx. Be like, watch me. I don't want you to ever think that whatever your dream is, like you ran a half of a million dollar uh, foundation, nonprofit. Like that's, you know how many people can't even raise $50,000? You know, that's really like, you've already done so much. So my, my point with you guys is this, you gotta, you gotta be your own best friend and you gotta be your own biggest believer. Like to the point where it's obnoxious. Where people are like, yo, dude, like you, are so, like you are so obnoxious about how much you believe in yourself. Because otherwise, this is not going to work. Okay? So, I want us to think outside of the box, but I want us to stay really grounded in like what we actually have to do next. Now, let's jump into the passions. Give me your, give me your passions again. Human rights. Human rights. Civil liberties. Eating healthy. Sorry about my handwriting. I write like I'm like a six year old boy. <laughs> Eating healthy and what else? Was there a fifth one though? You had, I thought you had five. What was the fifth one? Human evolution. Okay. Yeah, that was it. Greenhouse gases. So here's, here's the fun thing, okay? And this is, this is the part that I always love the most about the presentation. 
What most people say are two things. They either say, I have too many passions, Brian. You don't understand. I have too many passions, so they never start on anything. And then some people say, like, I don't know what my passion is. So, right now is the part of the presentation where we all get to have sex. I, we're, about to have, we're about to have idea sex. There it is. He knows. He's been here before. So, idea sex. We've done this before. So, idea sex looks like this, right? I had a friend that called me a few years ago. She lives in California. Colombian woman. She called me. She goes, Brian, I can't do it anymore. I said, I can't do what anymore? She was a friend of mine. She said, I, I, I hate my job. I'm, I'm unhappy. I'm depressed. I don't want to work here anymore. But I don't know how to make money doing what I love. And I said, Lorena, we're about to have sex. And she's like, dude, I just called you for advice, bro. Like, <laughs> chill out, you know? And I was like, no, 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 no. We're about to have idea sex, passion sex. Tell me what you're into. And she said, here's what I'm into. I'm into the beach, Brian. And I'm like, everyone's into the beach, you know? Beach. She said, I'm into yoga and healthy living and healthy foods, health and wellness, right? I said, what else are you into? And she said, I'm into going to seminars and retreats and conferences. Retreats. What else are you into, Lorraine? And she says, I'm into spending time with my daughter. I'm a single mother. I'm into spending time with my daughter, her daughter. Okay. And I said, okay, cool. So I'm into my daughter. I'm into retreats. I'm into learning and teaching about health and wellness. And I'm into the beach. I said, Lorraine, here's the idea. Ready? Here's the business. You start. Oh, and then she says to me, but the problem is a lot of these conferences don't allow children. And if they do allow children, the, the tickets are so expensive, I can't afford to bring my daughter. And I said, you should start a retreat, three-day retreat on the beach where you teach health and wellness to single mothers and their children. Boom. Sex. That baby turned into a business for her. That's what she does now. And she makes good money doing it. Cool, right? There's no reason that we all can't do that. And here's the thing that we have to remember. We're not going to come up with, like, this idea I came up with her, a year later she made money on it. Right? So take the pressure off yourself that, like, you need to start making money on this thing in the next seven days or you're a failure. These things take time. Right? And the advantage of doing it now while you're studying, now while we're like everybody in here is young to, enough to do these things, is you can start on it now. And then all of a sudden, a year from now, two years from now, I get emails from a talk that I did five years ago that said, yo, it finally popped off. That thing that I've been working on because of the, the, the idea, sex idea that you gave me is finally making money now, four and a half years later. Right? So be patient with yourselves. All right? So how does this look? These things in and of themselves, the reason I asked you why you would, what you would do with a million is because I want to know where your heart's at. And here's what 80% of you said, you want to help others. Here's the problem with helping others. People don't know how to monetize that. And you can't help others if you have no money. Right? You, you, you can but you can't help others to the degree that you would want to. If your first answer was that with a million dollars, you would help other people, that means that you want to help other people to a pretty big degree, right? And so what I want to do is I want to figure out ways to help you love the life that you have while you make the money that you have. And if helping others is something that you care about, which is we're going to get to you in a second, then let's make that a part of the business. So many people are separating the two. It's either I'm going to help other people or I'm going to make a lot of money. My thing is like, you can do both. So let's help people while you make money or help people while you do your thing. And then, right. So that's the goal. And the, pro the problem is people stay too general. I want to help people. I want to, I want to, I want to do human rights. What does that mean? I don't know. Right. But if we start to really flesh out the five things he cares about, and then we start to put it into something that's an actual business, 
right? Which is what you just said. Now things get more interesting because they, that you can taste it. It's close enough to taste. So what I want you to think about right now is with your passions, if you could start one business, it doesn't matter if it's a small business, if it's a big business, if it's an idea, if it's you as a freelancer, if you could do one thing tomorrow that someone would pay you a dollar for, what would it be? People are confused about what it means to actually be an entrepreneur. It means that you make money from your idea. It doesn't mean you have a full-time job and you write down in your Instagram profile entrepreneur because you've sold two hats this month and now you have a fashion company. You don't have a fashion company, bro. You sold two hats. <laughs> right? Don't lie to people, man. It's a bad idea. So unless you have people that are buying your service, you don't have a business, right? So now we have to identify who are your potential buyers? The point that I'm trying to make to you guys is this. Any idea that you have, you have to think about who would buy this product. And you don't have to make a million dollars a year. Maybe you can live here and be comfortable living in a studio apartment with two or three of your friends making $32,000 a year. But you love what you do. You are an entrepreneur. You're not an entrepreneur if you're not making money. And you are pretending like you're making money or you're renting a fancy Mercedes Benz, or you're going to the Caribbean once a year and that trip is literally all of your savings and you're putting up like, yo, can't wait for next week, I'll be back. No, you won't be back. You won't be back till 2022, bitch. So, who is going to buy what you sell? Give me ideas of, so, so let's pause for a second, we'll get back to Julian in a second. I wanna hear what your title is and I wanna hear who's gonna buy your stuff. Title, Francisco, go. Design, huh? Designer. Designer. Engineer. engineer. Same thing or different? Designer and engineer. Too, too broad. Go narrow. This is, I'm, 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 and I'm not picking on you. I'm glad we're doing this. I know we're just doing an exercise right now, but like if you were selling me something right now, I'd be like, I, I, I don't understand it. Next, you gotta go fast. Like, here's my thing, ready? You're spending too much on your marketing. I could get you five times more revenue with one half of your marketing spend if you hire my company. Can we talk? Yeah, we can talk. Hit them in the face with the value right away. You are a, you got it, you got it. Just hand woodwork specialist. Or I'm a creator of hand woodworked items or I founded a hand woodwork company. Okay, cool, keep going. You're Good, how are you gonna find them? That's the next step. Here are my clients that I think, here's how I'm gonna find them. So you have to have a great product that you believe in, which I'm sure you all will. Then you have to think about, I think my customer is this. Then you have to find out where, are, where they live. How do I get to them? Why, watch why this matters. Who's gonna be your customer? Good. Well, how are you gonna get to them? Great, so you're, you're like in the hustle mode, I love that. Now, that's great, let's, st let's stay with this example for a second because I like it. Three potential buyers, landlords, real estate companies, and then you're missing one that's really gonna be important for your business, interior designers, right? So you need to be friends with every interior designer in the world, and you'd be like, yo, my, my, my cabinets are the best and I'll give you a 10% piece of everything that you sell if you sell only my stuff, okay? Now, now watch this, ready? Gets even better. Now, what do we do next? We have a great idea, we have some clients, we have some ideas, we'll come to you in a second. What do we do next? You get to build a brand. The future of personal branding, it's the first part of this talk, right? And we're kind of like going in a little bit backwards, but I'm, I'm like liking this flow. The future of personal branding. Here's probably the most, uh, what I just said to you about making money is the most important thing I'm gonna say to you today. Without, without money, you don't have a business. Don't get it twisted. Don't let other people get in your ear about it. You will be upset if a day comes in your life that you have no more money in your bank account and you haven't even thought about making money. It's just, it, it will be very crushing. 
It's everyone's like, oh, but failure, like failure, I call it failure porn. It's not fun to fail. Everyone that's like, oh, but you, you're only successful if you failed. I'm like, okay, I don't wanna fail. I'm not scared of failing, but I don't wanna fail. So I'm trying to set you guys up in a position where you don't have to fail. Meaning, know this from the get. You gotta have a great product, you gotta have people that will buy it, and you gotta start making money. Now, <clears throat> once you have that thing in place, now it's time to start thinking about the brand. The biggest thing about the future of personal branding is you have to be honest about your process. And you have to put out as much content as you can. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Everybody thinks that the light has to be perfect, that the camera has to be $5,000, that the, the way that I speak in front, I can't pause, I can't say, um, what if English isn't my first language? None of it should hold you back from starting. Because there are eight billion people on this planet, the market is huge. And you will attract the right people if you do it with integrity and you do it constantly. Most people that, will, that would sell a cabinet would do what? they would just start what? Selling cabinets. Buy my cabinet, buy my cabinet. Have you seen my cabinet? It's the best cabinet in the world. It's the best, buy my cabinet, buy my cabinet, buy my cabinet. How many times do I need to hear from you to buy your cabinet before I no longer listen to you? Not that many. That's what I call, this is what I call push marketing. You've seen it in Facebook, you've seen it in Instagram, you've seen it on the internet, which is buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know who you are. Right? You're selling me constantly, I don't even know who you are and you haven't done anything for me. So watch this, now, what's really important is we have to think about how we can create a brand that adds immense levels of value to the community at large. So this is where I said at the beginning, like let's think even bigger. What I would love to figure out is how do, we, how do we make you a personal brand that everybody loves and can't get enough of and then of course they're gonna buy their cabinets from you, but it's not about the cabinet. So let me give you an example, if I were you and I lived in the South Bronx and I was selling appliances in the South Bronx, what I would do is I would turn myself into what I call a media company. So I'm selling cabinets or I'm an, a consultant slash I am a media company. And what does that mean? That means that I become the place that people come for knowledge, for information. What I would do is I would actually start to have a daily or weekly YouTube show, right? Where I interviewed who? The Everyday people of the South Bronx. Like Humans of New York, you know that book? Yes. I, would do the, I would do the faces behind the places in the South Bronx. And you go to their apartments that have cabinets and you go to, you sit down in front of their doors and maybe you even do something fun and you say like, today's episode, like every episode is about like the door you walked through to get here. And you tell inspiring stories about the people of the South Bronx and the doors that they walked through to get where they are today. The doors brought to you by your company. I would literally start thinking about myself as the person that people wake up in the morning thinking, what is this guy doing today? What is this gal doing today? Who is the inspiring story that we're learning about today on East 149th Street? And then I'm gonna send that, here's what's gonna happen, I'm gonna send your episode to like three of my friends that I know that live in the South Bronx, and they're gonna send it, and all of a sudden you just got in front of like 5,000 people because you did one show. And guess how much you paid for that? Zero dollars. Pretty crazy, right? Questions. I know that was a lot. I just threw you guys. Let's 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 like let's come back down, and let's do questions. Yes.
let's, it, it, great question, because it doesn't just apply to a product. Let's play it out. What do you want to do? Dentistry. Dentistry. You want to be a dentist, right? Or dental hygiene. Fine. Well, you want to be in the dental world, right? So let me just, so do you want to start your own business or do you want to work as an employee at a dentistry? I think the dream is to own your own place. Cool. So let's, let's say that's the dream. You want to own a dental practice. Where do you want it to be? It doesn't matter. You can make something up. Uh, Harlem. Harlem. You want to start a dentistry practice in Harlem. That's a service-based industry, right? People come to the dentist because, why, why, I mean, who was your dentist? Why, why do you guys? Well, reviews, good. So listen, this is, this is how I do market research, ready? I just heard the word convenience over here. I heard the best one, reviews over here. I heard insurance over here. Anthony, go ahead. Reputation. So, so if I'm you, right, and, and as much as I talk, I'm listening all the time. If I'm you, I'm listening. So here, I, in less than one minute, I just got four really helpful insights into why people choose a dentist. Convenience, reputation, ratings, insurance. That's what I just heard. So now, if I'm thinking through how to build my brand, I'm gonna create four separate pieces of content around each of those concerns, right? Now, let's talk about it. Most dentists, right? are being like, yo, free cleaning today, free cleaning this week, free cleaning this month if you come in and see us. Free cleaning, free cleaning, free cleaning, free cleaning, free cleaning, free cleaning. And you're like, I don't know who you are. That's push marketing. We don't wanna do push marketing. We want people to come to us. I'm going to her for my cabinets because of what she did with the content. How do I make sure people go to you? So, do you get that? I would set up, I would do that. I love, see, this is why I love you guys. This is why I love, Jason, this is why I love coming here, because these guys are hustlers, man. They're like, yo, I would buy a table, I would set my ass up in Harlem, and I would just start selling dental cleanings. I love that idea. Now I want you guys to think even bigger, which is, I would do that, I would also film it. And as people are walking by, I would ask them, what do you care about from a dentist? So many people are so focused on figuring out how to get new clients, that you don't even realize it, but you, Anna, actually have 32 clients right here in front of your face. She needs a cleaning, she needs a cleaning, he needs a cleaning, he needs a cleaning. All of us need a cleaning. So you should go up to Jason and be like, Jason, are you happy with your dentist? And no matter what he says, you should say, I'm better. Come on, give me a chance. Give me a chance, right? People are always, and so if you, if you get into the practice and they give you clients, form relationships with those clients, and then when you finish in two years, be like, yeah, by the way, I'm open to my own thing. If you've been happy with the service that I've given you, I it would mean a lot to me if you would come give me a chance. It's that simple. People are scared of sales and it's silly. If you believe in what you're selling, it's like for me, it's the easiest thing in the world to sell what I sell. Because I see it all the time. And when you, do, when you see it, all, and when you're in a service-based industry, it's easy to see. You either did a good job or you didn't. They either left with whiter teeth or they left with one less tooth. Like, like it's, you know, and if they left with whiter teeth, then you're gonna be happy to have them come back. If they left with one less tooth, you're kind of screwed, you know? That's the idea though, right? Believe in what you're doing. It's a good point that he's making. Yeah, Julian. Yeah, so like, <clears throat> I know you like filming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Writing, writing, vlogs or uh, blogs, LinkedIn, your 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 own blog. Get on other people's blogs. Get into other Facebook groups. Writing is a great way. If you don't like to be on video, you should write. If you don't like to write, you should do audio. You can literally take your phone out to a podcast. You should literally take your phone out. You could do a voice note. You just start talking, and you upload that as a podcast. Right, that's actually gonna be my next point, which is you need to put your content everywhere. Because here's what happens. Here's what happens. All of a sudden, tell me, tell me your name one more time, I'm sorry. Yeah, Vanessa. Vanessa all of a sudden, Vanessa starts doing a, a TV show about the, the, the faces behind the doors of South Bronx. You start doing a TV show about the smiles of New York. 
That would be a great TV show for you to do. What makes you smile? Every single day you find someone and you do a one minute video about what makes them smile. That's not hard, guys. I would do one with you right now. Brian, what makes you smile? What makes me smile is that I'm here at Hostos right now. I love these students. I love this group. I love Jason. I love coming here. Boom. Upload, done. Tomorrow you do it again. How long take? Five minutes. And every day people can be like, yo, I wonder what, what Anna's doing today. I wonder who she's talking to. I wonder who, who's smiling. And now all of a sudden what could happen is this, right? What could happen is we see Vanessa and we see Anna. And someone is watching Vanessa and Anna's show on YouTube and there's 12 views on their program. But one of those 12 views might be some executive at Disney. And then I go up to Vanessa and I go up to Anna and I say, hey, um, you guys are great on camera. I, I actually have a campaign coming up where I wanna do something similar to what you guys did. Can I pay you like $250,000 for the next 12 months to do it for me? And you're like, yeah, that could build a whole lot of cabinets, baby. Uh huh. You're like, I'm gonna be good looking at Miles for a year. I'm like, I'm, I'm okay right now, right? Let me tell you something. I swear to you on everything that that happens. But it will never, ever, ever, ever happen if you're waiting for your content to be perfect. Meanwhile, your content is living in your own dome and nobody sees it and nobody feels it and no one gets inspired by it. And you just keep saying, oh, one day when it's perfect, I'll put it out there. Let me tell you something. It's never going to be perfect. <clears throat> and let me tell you something else. You're using your perfectionism as an excuse because you are scared. You want to be so perfect? Let me tell you how to be perfect. Put it out there anyway. Other questions? Yes. Yes. And then I'll come to you. I had a question. Yep. Yeah. So I wanted to know, like, from your own experience, mm -hmm. how did you overcome that initial stage of getting people to yeah. have your trust? So, so initially, I, I, I priced myself fairly low. And also, you have to consider, I didn't come right out of college to, and became an entrepreneur. I worked for Bloomberg. I was a speechwriter in Bloomberg's administration. I wrote a lot of his uh, speeches for one of his commissioners. And so when I went to Silicon Valley, and so it's a good question because I didn't start by having a branding and marketing media company, right? I started by saying, I do public speaking coaching. My first thing was like, I was a public speaking coach. So they'd be like, what did you do? And I was like, well, I wrote speeches for Bloomberg's administration for three years. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So, so we know you're good. So like it's finding, and it's just like one at a time. It's like finding the one thing that you can do right now. So like you need to find the one company. So like if I'm doing like environmental consultancy, I would probably work for almost nothing for one company that really carries a lot of respect. So when you go to her to sell her at her company, you'd be like, yeah, you know, we had some success with, um, with Nike. Um, we were working with Nike uh, last year and I'd be like, Right? Oh, you were not like that. So you need to just find that one little credibility stack. And if you don't have it, you got to create it. And sometimes the way that you create it is doing it for free and then actually doing a good job. Yeah. You, and, and again, you can tap into to networks. Does that make sense? You just got to find the one, I call, I call them hat hangers. At this point I have a bunch of different hat hangers, but I started with Bloom, Bloomberg was my hat hanger. Everything went back to my, I don't, I don't even really mention Bloomberg anymore when I'm talking to clients because I'm six years in. But at the beginning, the first 12, 24, 36 months, it was like when I was working for Bloomberg, when I was working for Bloomberg, I, oh, okay, because that was instant. So you need to find that thing for you and then you'll keep adding on. But you have to make sure that it's honest, right? But like you'll keep adding on. And then two or three years in, you'll have two hat hangers. And then you'll have a third hat hanger. Then you'll have seven hat hangers. And before you know it, you won't even know what hat hanger to do because you have so many of them. And that's a good problem to have. Right? That makes sense? Cool. Vanessa. Um, my question is, is there a way to... Uh, so let me close out real quick before you do your thing. I know you do your thing. Couple different, couple final thoughts I wanted to share. Number one, thank you for coming. You guys are awesome. Uh, number two, I, I, I want you to all understand something very important. This is the best time ever, 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 ever to make money doing what we love. 
ever. It's never been easier. We have at our disposal through these phones more information than literally we have more information right now in the palm of our hands than the president of the United States had in the 80s. Think about that. It's true. Reagan had less power in his hand than we do now. My prayer for all of you and my plea for all of you is that please, 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 please don't listen to anyone that tells you it's not possible. Because they will. And let me tell you who will. All the people that have lived their lives in fear. And all the people that are so depressed because they see you and you're young and you're going for it and all they can think to themselves is, I wish I would have done that. But I didn't, so guess what I'm gonna do instead? I'm gonna say, yo, it's, don't do it, it's, it's a waste of time. Just be normal, be grateful. Be grateful that you have a roof over your head. Be grateful that you have food. Be grateful, just be grateful. Just be grateful for what you have. It's their way of saying like, don't push too hard. It's their way of trying to keep you in a box, in a cage. And let me tell you something right now, if you're scared of one or two people that are gonna give you a hard time about what you're doing, let me tell you what happens. They will give you a hard time and they will give you a really hard time. And the minute you're successful, they will look at you and they will say, good job. They will say, good job. So please, my, my plea for all of you is this, just start. A lot of people are gonna be in your ear. And the second that you hear the negativity, please get on my social media and please just watch all my videos and please listen to my podcast or find someone else that you can listen to because I'm here to tell you right now that I've worked with people that look just like every single one of you, whether it's age or religion or race or background. And I can tell you right now that if you can find one person, one person in the 8 billion people planet that have ever done something that you want to do, I promise you, you can do it too. And there will be so many people that tell you not to try and you should try anyway. And there will be so many people, people that tell you you're gonna fail and you should try anyway. Because here's what's gonna happen. When you're 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, if you've given it your whole life and you've tried and you still haven't hit it, you're gonna die happy because at least you tried it. But I can almost guarantee you, if you are here today voluntarily on a Friday, and if you're around this guy, right? And if you don't wanna listen to me, listen to him because he's the same. He believes in you more than anyone in the planet. I know it's your first meeting, but let me tell you something. I've been with this guy for five years working with, you, with these students, with you guys. I come in two hours a semester. He puts in 12 hours a day. People just don't care about people as much anymore, and this guy does. So please take advantage of him, you know? Like, take advantage of him. And I don't say that, like, take advantage of him, like, take everything, but he cares, so take advantage of that. You're not gonna, it's hard to find. It's hard to find a mentor. People write me all the time, hey, will you be my mentor? And I'm like, dude, I don't have time to be your mentor. And he like lives his whole life to be your mentor. That's his whole purpose. That's his passion, that's his skill, that's everything. I never met a more committed person. So the, the, the second to final thing I wanna just say is like, thank you for bringing me in here and thank you for the amazing work that you do. I honor you and I have so much respect for you. And then the last thing, and then the last, last thing that I want to say to you guys is this. It's going to be hard and it's going to take a lot longer than you think. I just told you, you can do it. I believe in you. I mean it and you can. Please, please, please promise me right now that you will, starting this moment, if you haven't done a good job of it in your life, then start today. And this is something that I have not done a good job of in my life until about the last year or two. You have to promise me that you will become unapologetically your own best friend. Like you have to love yourself so much more than you love anyone else. And by the way, that doesn't, and like I know there's a lot of immigrants in here and I work a lot, that like it's a very immigrant, like it's a very like you feel selfish when you think that. But my family means more, right? And that's a very cultural thing. You have to, it does not make you selfish to love yourself more than anyone, than you love anyone else. And it can't even be close. Like you have to love yourself a thousand times more than you love your mom. And I love my mom, but I love myself more because there's no way I can be there for my mom. There's no way I can be there for my daughter. I don't have a daughter, you have a daughter, I don't have a daughter. I would love a daughter one day. 
But there's no way I can be there for anybody if I can't be there for myself. So promise me, this is going to be hard, and there's going to be enough people that hate on you. Promise me you're not hating on yourself. Promise me today that you will become your own best friend, because when you do that, and after the crappy days, you look at yourself in the mirror and say, like, yo, I love you, and do that exercise. It's something that I still do today, and it really helps me. I know it sounds like weird. I look at myself in the mirror as much as I possibly can. I try to do it every day, but it turns out to be more like once every six months. But when I do it, I look at myself and I say, Brian, you're a good man. You're trying the best that you can, and I love you. And when you do that, and when you can really look at yourself and say, I love you, things start to change. Because you start to feel like you deserve it, all of it. And let me tell you, and my, my final thought is this, you do deserve it, all of it. Thank you, guys. If you're ready to build your personal brand and start to make great money doing what you love, please subscribe to my channel, hitting the button to the side, and we'll get you started in the world of BTV. Also, if you want to keep learning, check out the video below for more information on world-class content. Thank you for being here. We'll see you in the next BTV.